There was a lot of discussion about grandchildren today and explaining our actions to our kids. As I've often said in this chamber, my wife and I are blessed with three children who are now 26, 23, and 20 years old. But when I first came to this chamber, they were seven and four and six months. So throughout my career here, I tried my best when you got home and got the typical questions of your kids. Daddy, what did you do today? To try as best I could to explain what we do here and why I might have missed dinner or a soccer game or a little league game. And even though the kids are older, I still think it is always helpful to try to be able to explain what we do as if we're talking to that four-year-old. So what would I say today if I had to explain what we did or are about to do or what we've learned today with regard to this bill? I'd first say that over the several hours of debate, I heard my colleagues speak from the heart, share stories, personal, emotional, some with tears in their eyes, with voices cracked, with emotion on both sides of an issue. I would try to explain to that four-year-old that what we were talking about is punishment and in particular, the death penalty. And what I would say to the four-year-old is we, as a legislature, debated and took a vote on whether or not our state would have a policy of capital punishment, the death penalty. Whether or not, I would say to that four-year-old, we would ever put to death someone no matter what they did. But I'd have to pause and say, except. Because you see, we've talked about banning the death penalty, about changing the policy of the state of Connecticut. We've talked about justice. We've talked about the mistakes that are made, the, the moral issue when it comes to the state taking a life. And yet, by the very terms of the bill we're about to vote on, we allow the death penalty to continue for at least 11 people and maybe more. And if you've ever talked to a four-year-old, which I'm sure most of you have, they say the darndest things. And they have such honesty and sincerity. And they might say, I don't get it. I thought you said that you changed the policy so there would be no more death penalty. Yet you just told me, in some cases, there still may be state-executed deaths that take place. That's tough to explain. It's tough to explain to a four-year-old, and it's tough to explain to a 40-year-old or a 94-year-old. Because to many, it is illogical and does not make sense. I know there are many faith-based organizations, I certainly belong to one, that have supported this bill because they believe that the taking of human life is wrong. And if they are to preach or talk about this bill from the pulpit, they might have some difficulty. Because as we've all admitted, and as is allowed for in this bill, at least 11 men on death row may subsequently to the passage of this bill be put to death. And when that happens, what will we say? How do we explain that? How do we justify that? How could we say it is no longer the policy of the state of Connecticut to take a life, yet we are allowing a life to be taken? 
So it's in conflict. Unless, unless maybe we're hoping, or some may be hoping, that those 11 people never really face the death penalty. We talked about that and we learned about it today. When I asked the question of Representative Fox, what happens if this bill is ruled unconstitutional because of that duality of having capital punishment apply to those on death row, but never apply in the future? And he is, the honest man he is said, what most likely will happen is all those on death row would no longer be subject to the death penalty. We haven't only heard that from Representative Fox. The Division of Criminal Justice, through Kevin Kane, who testified before the Judiciary Committee, issued a statement that said that the notion that the death penalty could be repealed prospectively, as envisioned by this bill, is tenuous at best. Prospective repeal of the death penalty will create two classes of people. One will be subject to execution and the other will not. Not because of the nature of the crime or the existence or absence of any aggravating or mitigating factor, but because of the date on which the time was committed, the crime was committed. Think about that, folks. Are we really changing the policy of the state of Connecticut? Yet we have that conflict in our law? That's a tough one. You know, I saw an old colleague here today, one that we all know and love. And I told him that in preparation of today's debate, I, I sort of reviewed the other debates we've had on this subject. And in particular, I remember, and it's been referenced here today, the debate we had in 2005. It was for the total repeal of the death penalty. And at that time, you might recall, it was all about Michael Ross. Death row inmate, murdered eight people brutally. As someone said, he might have been the poster boy for the death penalty. And uniquely, he wanted to die. But many people wanted to prevent his death from taking place because they believe with all their heart that the death penalty was wrong. And they brought that bill up, and you want to talk about courage. This person who was reviled as one of the most heinous villains of our time in our state's history wanted to be put to death. And people had the courage to stand up and put forth a bill that said, we repeal the death penalty not only prospectively, but to everyone, including Michael Ross. That's courage. That is a principled debate. That's the real deal. With all due respect, ladies and gentlemen, this is not. This is not. At best, it's an unconstitutional law. And at worst, at worst, I would hope it's an unintentional but misleading law to the public. Had we passed the very same law two years ago when it was before us, in 2009, as I indicated before, Stephen Hayes and Joshua Komazajewski would not be on death row. There's a lot of irony to that, because in many respects, it's because of those gentlemen that we have the bill that we have before us. I am part of a democracy and I'm part of this chamber. I've indicated before my personal feelings with regard to my support of the death penalty. But I will, as we all will, accept whatever this chamber decides in a few moments. But I gotta tell you, it's gonna be really, really difficult to explain this one to that four-year-old. It's gonna be tough. And I hope, as Representative Butler said, in the end, we could all look that four-year-old, or anyone for that matter, in the eye and say what we did was about justice. I'm not sure we could say that with the passage of this bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.